Hi everyone. I thought since I sit at this table non-stop every day uh, and I haven't done a video in a while, I don't know, 100 years it seems like, I thought I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do one now. So I'm going to take, what I want to do is I want to do some of my spirit stitching. Now some people are asking me, well, what is spirit stitching and how is that different from slow stitching or embroidery or any of the other hand stitching? Well, the difference is, is, um, I don't have that very square, do I? Um, the difference is... In spirit stitching and in slow stitching is spirit stitching is a mixture of every stitching so you can use your sewing machine along with hand stitching along with embroidery along with anything that you anything any way your spirit moves you and um, so that's why we call this spirit stitching so it doesn't have I mean slow stitching has no rights or wrongs in it either although I was just watching one lady teaching slow stitching and she had some rights and wrongs but I don't have rights and wrongs so anyway so slow stitching spirit stitching is a mixture of everything and so what I want to do today well I want to show you first a couple things see here I've got beautiful pieces like this this here is a piece that was sent to me but it's already um, a sewed on a sewing machine is somebody was making uh, quilt pieces out of this. Well, I want to make, I'm going to use some of that. So that's, that, and I'm going to put it on with the sewing machine. But I've been doing just some slow stitching. Um, in fact, I've done all of these in the last couple of days. And they're just pieces. This was a piece of really old, washed many times piece of quilt that somebody sent me that. Well, I um, just, I cut it, it was in a bigger piece, so I just cut it into smaller pieces. And like here, this piece was just in like a rectangle, but see, I had cut it off of somewhere you know, so it was a different shape. Well, then I took the piece I cut off, and then I just did little slow stitching, spirit stitching right on here. So, and all I did was um, added this braided um, sari ribbon, I um, sari cord, sari threads. It's braided anyway, and it's sari fabric, so. And it's so pretty. And um, I just stitched that on that piece. This one here, I stitched, oh, well, I had cut a circle out of the piece that I did on something else, and then it was on the edge of something, so I cut this off, but see, I so this is on the back, that piece of, of um, the quilt, well-loved, I mean well-loved quilt, faded so much. You can see the fading on the back of that so much. And um, then I added a couple pieces of fabric. And then that piece I cut off of here, wherever it was with that circle, I put that even on top of it. And so it got stitched on too. And then this was a piece of my dyed yarn. And this is a really old vintage button. And this is a newer button. And that's all it is. And then just just um borrow stitching on it you can see on the back the borrow stitching and then this one here this one here i i've had a couple now ask me how to do these little flowers this here flower if you have heard of turkey work and i guess it's an embroidery thing would sort of thing it's called turkey work this is like unfinished turkey work. So this is like when I was watching the lady do the turkey work, she got this far and I said, wow, I like it right there. But she continued on with it and made it even something different. But I liked it right there. So I did the turkey work 
since it's not a full head fledged turkey, I'll just call it chicken work. Chicken work there, and then some in the center of that sunflower, I did a um, some um, French knots. And then this, all the, the um, stem of the flower is just couched on pieces that I got out of my rug that is made out of sari fabrics. This one here too was just a piece of, uh, like I used a piece of, um, like on the backs, when you're, when you're doing some, on, on the backs, for me anyway, when I'm doing some kind of slow stitching, I like to have some fabric on the back to be like a heavier fabric, like duck cloth um, and upholstery kind of fabric, something a little bit firmer to stitch through. through. And then here I have, I took pieces out of that sari fabric, because I just got all my sari fabric in a, I, I, took the whole rug apart I um there's I took the whole rug apart and then I put all them pieces in the washer and dryer and put some fabric softener in there so they smell pretty because they did have a little odd smell so uh, every bit of this fabric come from that rug except for this is a piece of knitted cord this light green every every bit of the other fabric and the flower is all made out of that sari fabric. I don't want to call it sari silk because all saris are not made out of silk. Just the more fancy um, saris are made out of silk. This is, so the, there might be some silk in this, but um, where I want to buy some silk though is I want to buy some men's neckties. So next time I go to the thrift shop, I'm going to be looking at men's neckties. And because at my thrift shop, they sell them 50 cents each. And so I want to look and see if I can find any pretty silks that I want to pull apart. But anyhow, that's what that one was. And this one, too, was a that chicken work. And I used a piece of upholstery fabric here. And and then this, I the leaves and the stem is out of that same sorry fabric. It's that one. And then here, oh, that one's got the same green fabric, too. But then here, this here, this here flower was just twisted fabric that I just kind of just twisted it. And then it's got a little f button on there. And then that same um, yarn that I bought that I, ch I just made it into a different color by spraying it. And there was a piece of a, that's a piece of a quilt on that corner. And then I just did borrow stitching around. And that's pretty, and that one too has it off of that same piece of green for the leaves. And this one here is, um, again, just the twisted, twisted fabric that I made for that flower and stitched it on there. And the same thing, and a lot of French knots and I wrote love on there. And, um, but they're small and beans as they're small. Oh, and then this one's a little bit bigger. This one here, I, I, I had this little piece, I had this piece of, um, upholstery fabric just laying here. And I had this piece of like lacy stuff. And so I stitched that. That was what I did first is I just stitched that down the middle and then I thought, okay, well, I need to put some more stuff. Well, then I had this roll of, of, of twill, twi twill ribbon, twill. That might not be the right word, but um, I'm getting so bad with my words. Oh my goodness, they just don't come to me. Things I did know at one time, I don't know anymore. And I put that on her, and then all of these are vintage buttons. Because I've got a lot of the vintage, really vintage, like, shirt buttons. And I love the look of them. I like that worn look of the buttons. This one here is not vintage, but I think all the rest of them are. And so I just got the different buttons there. And then that heart was sitting on my desk. And a little piece of fabric. Well, I had that piece of fabric there. And then another piece. And I just scrunched that one up and put it there. And so I think that is pretty. But the thing is... Now, when I have, like this here is a 
a needle book that I made. And um, it's got some little pockets on it. And you all might have seen me make this because I made it and then and then on a, it made that on a video. But um, and I used two of my two of my um, rag quilt squares to do that. But now to even add more to this, you can take you can take one of these or even two of these. You can add them to the front of anything. Like here, here is a little needle book I started. And that's as far as I got with it, which I thought that fabric is so pretty. It's so soft and textury. But then if you take that and then you add something like this to the front of it, then it is absolutely amazing. Any one of those. Just put that on the front of, of the needle book. Or if you were to even just make a greeting card and put something like this just on the front of the greeting card, then these are quick to make. They're so pretty. You just... And it doesn't have to be a flower. I mean, I just was into flowers these last few days. And so, but it can be just anything. And if you put that on the front of just a plain book, a plain anything, and look how pretty. It doesn't even have to be the that same shape like this. If I was to put this here, then add a couple buttons up there, that would be pretty. Or a word any kind of a word that would be pretty too. So these are just ideas that you can do with your slow stitching your your slow stitching things. Like this here book. You know what I'm gonna do? This this here book you all may have seen already on the um on the on the Scrap Liz Unicorn site there's a challenge going up for the month. This month's challenge is this is the prize for this month's challenge and um it's a needle book but i'm not done stuffing it yet i gotta stuff it i gotta put stuff i gotta stuff it that's all i have to do with this is stuff it and so um but the, if you look how pretty that looks even on a page you could make one of these pages nothing but just something pretty and so I'm gonna put that in there. That'll be in there too. Cause when I uh, before I mail this off, it'll be filled with with prizes things. But um, there's a this this is the prize that's going to be for the winner of the um, challenge is to make either a keychain or a um, pin cushion or a keychain and a pin cushion. If you do both of them, you get two tickets. But for everything that you post, no, everyone who posts, you get a ticket in the hat. But I mean, you can't post 99 tick things because you won't get 99 tickets. You still only get one ticket. One ticket for a, uh, um, one ticket for a keychain and one ticket for a pin cushion. And um, just to post them up in the Scrap and Lizzie book. Um, Scrap and Lizzie um, site. And if you go to Scrap and Lizzie, it's pinned right to the top. You'll see this picture of this, and then the directions will be there, what you have to do to be able to get your name in the drawing. And it isn't going to be whoever's is the prettiest. It's going to be the luck of the draw. Okay. So anyhow, I wanted to tell you about that too. But I, I work on so many different things all at one time. And I switch back and forth and back and forth. And I have so many things. Like, see, I have, I have, this is, oh, this one, all I've done with this one is did some, I have a bag full of junk. I, I have a bag full of, I got it right here behind me. Because every time I have a thread or a, um, if I have threads, or if I have a piece of fabric that's too small 
to do anything with, as you can see in here. It's, well, that one's a little bit biggish, but most of it is like this. It's just fluff. Okay, put that back in there. That's what I used on this. I just put all that on here, and then I covered the whole, I just spread it around equally on there, and then I covered it up with tulle, and then did this here. Free motion quilting, what the best I can with a free motion quilting, but I kind of need a little bit of experience at that. But it's got it all hold, held down. But then you can take even something like this and you can still add on top. And that's what I do is I add to the top of this. So this is only a basic part of my art. And then this, you know, adding things to this, like here, I did basically the same thing. I put a bunch of things down and then I covered it with tulle and then I um well you can kind of still see the stitching back there where I I did the I did the, um free motion quilting and but then on top many of these things then have been added after the fact after I did the tool that a lot of these things are added then later and then I can still take and put something here or anywhere on here. I've got some little beads that I put on there and buttons. Oh, I don't have any buttons on here. I have to put some buttons. Essentially, I always end up with buttons and beads and butterflies and those kind of things. But anyhow, in this one here, I have this one that's going to be... I just got to put the kit together and list this one because I believe this one is finished the cover. I make the covers and then I put the things together to make the the kit and but then I don't get the kit together real quickly because I'm sitting here stitching. I should be cleaning or something but I'm not doing that. I'm just I'll get it done. I'll get I'll get her done. That's what I will do. I'll get her done. So anyhow but anyhow so spirit stitching that's what we were talking about all these things up here. Now, what I want to use is, now where did I put that piece of fabric? Did I throw that over here in this pile? See, I have piles of things, you guys. I don't know if you all are like me at all with your piles of things. Oh, good grief. Now I can't. Where did I just showed you that piece? Oh, here it is. And so, what I, what I then want to do now, this here, what I'm going to do with this, this isn't going to be a cover because it, I'd have to make it really small. Mm, it might be. I don't know. It might be because I can cut it. Yeah, I could cut it like this, but I'm going to cover the whole thing. I'm going to play with the whole thing. So what I'm going to do, though, see here, is I want to get some of this pieced fabric. See, although this is pieced for quilting, it's not a quilt. It's just pieced. All right. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm, this is what I'm going to do with this. This is not going to be, have any rhyme or reason, but I'm going to whoopsie daisies. change my needle. When you hear that needle going through, well, then you know it's time for a new needle. And so I'm just sewing this on here. I'm showing this piece on here. Let's see. This is also a piece that's just sort of put together, sort of. And then there's this piece. Let's 
see how accurately I'm doing this? Precise. And, um, and let's see, I'm going to just keep adding things until this is covered. And so now my spirit is moving me to do this, not my fault. So this is, and, and so you, no plan, no plan ahead, no plan ahead. Let's see. And I got this, oh look how cute that is with some little cows on there. Let me cut that into a different size. Yeah, let's just put it right there. So I just kind of put it wherever it'll, well, sort of fit. It doesn't have to exactly fit. And then I have another bit of this piece, a bit of that. Let me see how, let me cut this one like this, because it looks like it'll fit right here. Move that over here. Okay, let's put that right there. Let, let us just put that right there, okay? I'm using like a serpentine stitch on here because it's, it's, I don't want to use a real straight stitch because I can't sew anything straight. And this kind of gives it a reason for not being straight. My excuse. just bunched up a little under the needle that's all good too that's good it's part of the plan just pretend that's part of the plan and see I don't get one piece completely stitched on before I add another piece oh look I got a little piece of yellow showing there what can I do oh look at this piece isn't this like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life so there we go. Let us just put this right here. There we go. That's where we're going to put that. You know what I haven't tried yet? I bought something new and haven't tried it. Maybe I'll try that. In a second here. of my edges stitched down. I gotta go down here though. So I do just go ahead and stitch across there and make a shortcut and then I'm gonna go here. Okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what I bought. I don't know if you all see how that's looking already. It's just like really crazy patch now really crazy patch and that's what we like it's really crazy patch okay wait a minute i'm gonna get this can it's a can of stuff hang on watch my stuff i'm turning around here i'm getting into my 
This is what I just got. It's called Odif 505 Temporary Adhesive for Fabric. No stain, acid-free, extremely flammable. So don't be smoking cigar when you're using this. Work on protected surface. Shake well. Always pre-test on material. Oh, yeah, right. Hold can 12 inches from surface and spray lightly. Spray, press spade surface on a position while adhesive is tacky. Washable can be dry cleaned. All right, so, and it's not supposed to clog up your needles or nothing, nor nothing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get, what am I going to, hang on. As you can see, I don't plan ahead. Oh, look, I have a piece of something else here that's just stitched together. Oh, I think I did this all by myself one time. Why, why did I do that and stop? Oh, wait, I can't cut this. I remember what that is. That's something else. Okay, well, this is a piece of sorry silk, or sorry something. I'm sorry, but it's a piece of something sorry. Okay. How's the rest of your family? Just as sorry. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, they're just as sorry. Okay, so then here, this is where I was just sewing fabric together one day. Okay. Wait a minute, it's just fabric. Hmm. Why do I want to go ahead and do that? I sew a bunch of fabrics together and then I take them apart and use pieces. That's just weird. That's just how I go. That's just how I turn the corner. So now I've got, like here, I'm going to just cut a piece here. And... this piece. I'm just cutting it off of there like that. I actually even have my arm going right here. Just a minute here. Let me get my arm. My arm just iron that just a little flat. Just to flatten that out just a bit. See there? I don't want to iron this because it's probably melt. But what I want to do now, y'all guys, yuns, yuns guys, this is what I want to do. I want to get my here. I'll get a paper towel or six. I guess, yeah, I don't know. I've never used this before. I just seen somebody using it. I said, I need to have that in my life. And so I ordered me some. There. Now I'm going to put this here. Now. Now. Okay. It says shake well before using. I don't know if that means you got to get up and shake. Oh, okay. Now, let me see. Let me check first where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it like right here. Okay. I know where I'm going to put it. So here we go. I'm just going to give it a little spray. They said 12 inches. That's about 12 inches. Okay. Now this is supposed to hold that nice and in its place. Let's see if they're lying to us. Let's see if this really does hold. Okay, now. Oh, wait a minute. I want to put this piece to here. This is that. Sorry. This one here, I do believe, is silk, actually. But I'm going to here we go. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit comes out. I mean, a lot comes out with a little bit of spray. Okay, so what if I just put that over top here like this? It is kind of holding. Okay, let's see what it does. And the lady that I seen using this was very professional. She was like a professional teacher. And so that's when I said, oh, I need some of that. And um, and there was something she was doing too that I want to try too. 
and that's why and you almost kind of need that kind of stuff to try this stuff so I look at a lot of things that has to do with scrap sewing scrap fabrics scrap everything because I am scrapped and lizzy and proud of it so when we talk spirit stitching we're spirit stitching and it very lightly is held on there that's amazing very lightly it is on there and the, what I wa was watching her do she was not using like real flat fabric it was f fabric that was like like wiggle not wiggle that's not the right word but fabric that was um, wrinkled but it went on the project wrinkled okay and now here I just want to get stitched down here a little bit just because I can I'm gonna make sure I have all my pieces stitched Oh, here's Snoopy there. Oh, what's his name? I'm going to get him there. So you can do this. I, can, I think I can do this um, free motion quilting better without using the actual right directions. Okay, see, now I want to put, I need just a little bit, another tiny piece of fabric. Oh, maybe I'll use a piece of this. You see how I um, get everything planned ahead and perfect and stuff? Yeah, I don't. I just need a little piece. Just a little piece of you, Mr. Satin. Or Mrs. Satin. Because you just have to go in this corner right there. That's all you need to do. That's your job. Okay, now let's go like this right here. I know I'm behind on my live streams. Hopefully I'll do one tomorrow. Um, hopefully I'll do a live stream tomorrow. And which on my live stream I'm gonna do something with um, with wax with wax seals. See, I could have sprayed that, couldn't I have? But see, that'll stay fine without spraying. and jiggles all stitched down. You see how much sense this makes? How I got everything just exactly matchy, watchy, and all that stuff? Okay. Now, I'm going to do this. Okay. Let me scoot that out the way. And now this is what I have. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut the edges of this overhang. I wish, wish it was that easy to cut off my overhang. My overhang's got to be there. A little muffin top stuff. Cut this little piece off right here. Now, oh, and let's cut this little piece off right here. Now, this stuff here, that is what I put in this bag I just showed you. And I just dump it in there. Okay, so now, this here would make a little book, but this would make it kind of long and skinny. Would long and skinny be bad? No, not really. Long and skinny wouldn't be bad. Long and skinny would be just fine. So, it's going to be long and skinny. Okay, I need to turn off my iron before I forget. 
Okay, that's off. Now, so long and skinny. Now, I think I would let this be the back. And I would let this be the front. And then I would... This here, I took a two-inch piece of fabric and did that wiggle stitch I showed the other day on it. I wonder if... You know what? I If I cut this, it's going to come open. But, okay, so then if I w don't want it to come open, what if I just... Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to just try and just stitch all the way down the center of it. My bobbin's almost empty. I am going to see how this works. I'm watching my fingers. Not worry. Not to worry. I'm watching my fingers. Because, see, because I want to be able to cut this. And I don't want it to come apart. And as long as I put this line of stitching down the middle. And I never worry about what color matching my threads up. Because I always have this multicolored thread on my machine. Oh, you know what? I just now ran out of bobbin thread. Right when I was finished with that. I run out of bobbin thread. If that isn't just hunky dory. So now see I fill all my bobbins up with the multicolored thread. So and I just take that empty one out, put that in here, put this one in here, and I don't care. If you have me make you a wedding dress, it's going to have multicolored thread on it. So make sure you get somebody else to make your wedding dress. That's how I do it. Have it multicolored. All right. Now. There we go. Now what I want to do, this. This is what I'm thinking now. Is if I take this piece and put it all the way down the front on the edge right on the edge so it's going to go again you're going to go again Mr. Machine you can do this now. now this is spirit stitching whatever your spirit guides you let your spirit guide you and so if it turns out ugly, say, what my fault? It's where the spirit guided it me. Guided it. And so, you know what? This stuff is fun. This is just nothing but fun. I'm going to go ahead and go right on down this. Just to give that a double whammy right there. Make sure it's nice and strong. Because I'll use that on something else then. Okay, so then... Okay, so now, see, so far, it's all machine stitching. Now I'm going to cut that just right off there. And I don't mind raw edges either. See, now that'll hold together. That'll go on another something. But see, okay, then maybe I'll round this corner just a little bit. Maybe I'll just round this corner just a little bit. And the two little pieces, they go in that bag. I won't throw nothing away, I'm telling you. Okay, so now that this is going to, now that's going to be that that um, needle book cover. But I need to have something in here. Something's going to go in here. Let's, let's, what do they call that now? We're going to, no, no, not that one. Um, no, not that one. Um, maybe and 
I think that's the one right there. I, I believe that's the one that's going to go leave right there. Okay, do I want to move it down just a little bit? Yeah. Move it down just a little bit. Because this has turned out kind of dark and it's... Although you can still see through it, you can still see through the fabric that's behind it. It's kind of cool. So, I now is where we're just going to hand stitch that. So this is the stuff here. Odif 505 Temporary Adhesive for Fabric. I think this can was like 20 bucks. Don't tell my husband I spent 20 bucks on that. Oh, he wouldn't care. He wouldn't mind. I spent 20 bucks on it. It's my 20 bucks. All right. Now, let's see what I'll do now. We'll just get some, get a needle. Now we're going to get us a needle here. Yeah, that's a sharp. That's a sharpen. You know what? Oh, you guys, you know what I did? I ordered some expensive needles. I mean, not a whole lot expensive, but they were more expensive than what I can get over to the Walmart. And I ordered them needles, thinking, and I ordered them because they come in, because they came in these separate little tubes. So, the, so this one was chenille size 18 this one is milliner size 3 and this is short darner size 9 this one is milliner size 1 but i ordered them thinking okay this way i can learn i paid the extra so i could learn the different needles and and also not to not to rag on this lady SueSparko.com. I have bought two of her books, and her, she does the best embroidery, and her books are amazing. But as soon as I started stitching with one needle, the needle broke in half. The needle broke, and, and I still don't know the difference between these needles. They didn't help me where I thought they would. They're, I'm still confused. And so, but I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. I'm sewing away, and the whole right where the gold eye meets the silver part of this, the, the needle, it just broke. I said, well, good grief. You'd think if you spend a lot of money on needles, they're going to last you for the whole of your life. Well, they didn't. It broke. Almost cursed me. It almost caused me to curse. So, but I didn't curse. Don't have to put a quarter in a swear jar. So now, see... Now, this whole thing is hand-stitched, this little piece on there. So then, I want to put this in here. Wait a minute, i got to get my, my needle threader. Dang. Well, that doesn't want to go in there. It's too... The thread's too thick. Let me see if I can get it in here this way with this piece. Oh, wow. That barely fit. Okay. Now, let me... Now, see, I'm just going to stitch this piece on here. And because I did... I did... um. Because I had no plan whatsoever for this, no plan, and um, I still don't have a plan. And I'm just putting fabrics together, and I can use the sewing machine if I want to. I can use um, hand stitching. I can just stitch any way I want. I can stitch when you're doing spirit stitching because you just you just stitch away you just do whatever you use your sewing machine you can use and you can even stitch it with a safety pins you can put this whole thing together with little safety pins 
I've done that before. Just put stay safety pins to hold things together. I like the look of safety pins just on, on a project. Like, especially those little bitty gold safety pins you can get. Those little ones are only about a half an inch long. And then if you take and you put like one, two, three, four, five, just stick them on there like that. That looks pretty, I think. Looks real pretty. And so, I always keep my pliers here too. Because sometimes when I get to going through many layers of fabric, it doesn't want to come through. And here... I call this a whip stitch. I don't know if it's really a whip stitch, but it's the one I use the most just to put things on there. And um, would it look better if I used a professional blanket stitch or something? Uh, maybe. I don't know. But this is making me feel good right here, just like this. And so then I just get the whole thing just stitched on there. I've been doing, my room is getting to look a little bit cluttered in here, but I'm getting it to where, I'm getting it to where everything I need is right handy. I have more of a little, you know, challenge getting around these days. And um, you guys, when you get old, you'll understand. And so for me, I have this chair that twists all the way around. And um, I have the things I need most often all the way around. So I have my threads, my, my thread. I got these three drawer things. I got six drawers right there to the side of me. Those plastic drawers you can get at Walmart. And I got all my scissors are in one drawer. I got um, threads in another drawer. And I've got another drawer that's just all buttons. And I've got one drawer that's miscellaneous. So, so in there I've got some glue sticks and different things like that in there. So it's right there. Right there. And then I have underneath me, underneath this table, I've got one bin that is nothing but um, different kind of fibers. And, you know, not regular yarn, but yarn that is the fanciest yarns which it was all in one big fat wad. But then I worked with that yesterday. I spent a lot of time um, untangling it and separating it. And I used little sandwich bags and I used, I have some of these, some of these, wait a minute, you see these bobbins. These here bobbins I got that I can just twist some fibers around, some ribbons around and stuff to sort. And so we were doing that. Papa helped me on. He's, he's got more patience than I do when it comes to um, untangling things. And so he's been helping me untangle and get things wound up on the bobbins. So anyway, um, so that's what we've been doing. I didn't have Jeffrey this weekend, so that was kind of sad. I always have him every weekend, but I didn't have him this weekend. Mommy was off. Well, Mommy was off only because she's sick. But, but So she'll go back to work next weekend, next Friday night. Okay, so then that is as far as that will go. And so I'll tie that thread in a knot, and I'm going to pretty much let that go for now. Just to show you, um, spirit stitching, like I say, it's not just embroidery. It's not just hand stitching. You can use your sewing machine. You can put anything on it. Just, you don't have to worry about what kind of, what kind of um, threads you use, what kind of fabrics you use. A lot of my threads nowadays are um, like what I just, this piece here, this just come off of a, a roll of, a roll of um, white crochet cotton, 
like you use for crocheting or tatting um, doilies and things and I spray it I just take a wad of it and I put it down and I just spray it with my inks and I get all different colors like that and then just wind it, wind it on these little bobbins and I can get all the colors and I like this because it's easy to thread it's like crochet um, embroidery floss is like six strands of floss six strands of thread to make the floss and um, it's hard for me to thread all six strands and then when if I only want to just do part of it it's hard for me to get them apart it seems like I'll go try to take them apart and get knots in them this works perfect then they make friendship floss too which is like they make with friendship bracelets and that's not like embroidery floss because it's not six strands it's just the one but it's heavier than this and so this being lightweight it's I like this a lot I like using this a lot Okay, I don't have that completely stitched all the way around. And then I'll probably, and so I'll finish that after a while. But I'll most likely, I will put um, some buttons down here. Maybe I'll put a button here and there. I'll, you know, I'll probably add to it somehow this way. I'll probably, what I like to do in, this, in the inside then is I'll take one piece of fabric and I will um, stitch it, hand stitch all the way around to um, make like the lining. And, but I like, now these buttons that I use, I have got, and I'm thinking about putting them up in my, in my um, little shop thing I have. These are vintage buttons. And they're all different. I mean, and they're very vintage. They're old, and they're mostly shirt buttons. Mostly shirt buttons. So, but like this one here is wood. A lot of them are like that. What is it? I keep wanting to say albacore, but that's tuna. Um, like abalone stone. There is some really awesome. I got a really good deal from these one once from... Some of them I don't think are real, real old, but these are all used buttons. And, but I've got quite a bit of these, and I was thinking that I'm going to put them, like this one here, look at that, it's been through a war or something. But um, I love using them old buttons. And it just, and like that one, that one, piece that I made with all them old buttons on it. This is, I put all them, they're just old buttons. And I just love the, how that looks with just them old buttons on there. I just think it looks amazing. So it looks like a number four. But, um, I think I'm going to put, list some of these buttons on my selling Scrap and Lizzie site, not Scrap and Lizzie Unicorns, but on my Facebook Scrap and Lizzie site. I think I'm going to um, list some of these. I'll have to see how I'll do that, but I think I will because I got plenty enough that, enough for everybody, and, and then I can maybe recoup the money I made from them. I spent, which I didn't spend a whole lot, but look at the back of this, how even some of this fabric is just loose. It's, and like this is a piece of that that uh, that quilt that is so pretty. It's just I just love having and when you feel it even there's a piece of satin and this is the sorry silk and that's just cotton and this is a, a pieced fabric. This is an old quilt. It's just beautiful. Something needs to be down here too and I'm not sure. Maybe a cluster of buttons or something. Maybe I'll put a uh, maybe I'll put a um, like a, hmm, uh, a yo-yo maybe down there. That might be what I'll do. I'm not sure, but something, something has to live down there. Look, I have this word here. It says, sm oh, that's, that's where I wrote safety and I misspelled it. I got to put that in that bag. Okay, that's no good. I thought that's the one that said smile, but it doesn't say smile. And so, but... And then if you, like, if you got a little piece of fabric like this and you cut just a little image out of it, you can put that little image down. 
And so whatever, however, your, however spirit just moves you, that's what you do. All right, I'm going to tell you what now. I'm going to read something to you like I do every day. Well, not every day. Every time I do a, a video, I read something. So let me see. Um, let me find something I haven't read. You know what? I wonder what's in this book. Lead us safely home. This has got little short things in it, too. Let me see. Okay, I just opened it to this page, and it says heart felt right here. And so let's see what this says. Heart felt. Oh, violin, how sweetly you soothe the pining soul. How sweet is your dear melody. How much the strings must know. How pretty are the birds that sing. Their music fills the air. Just one other gift that gives a present to the ear. How overwhelming are the blooms that paint the hills and sides. The vines that climb the purple cliffs where hues and scents collide. Tis then the heart is flowing. Tis then the soul is free. Tis then the air is giddy with nature's majesty. And that was written by James Joseph Huesgen. That is very nice. Tis then the heart is flowing. Tis then the soul is free. And when you're doing like this kind of a stitching, it does free your soul. It frees your soul to, to do it and then to have it when it's done. Because when it's finished, it's just, it's like amazing that there's so much to see in it. And I put this together myself and still I can just keep looking at it and looking at it and I love it. Okay, I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make, bring you back to the next video, safe and happy, healthy and hearty and humble and, and well. Okay, well, I said healthy. That would be the same as well, probably. Ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. God bless you all, and thank you so much for watching.